We don't often talk about Nobel Prize winners on the show, but I have to today because this year's Nobel Prize in economics is directly about one of the huge problems of economics today. And if you watched or listened to the show last week, I interviewed economist Steve Keen, and he explained to us different ways in which economics is falling short in explaining how the world actually works. And it leads to totally destructive policy. If you don't understand the basics of how economics works and then you make policy based on those misunderstandings, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to make really bad decisions. One uh, item, one term that Steve Keen mentioned and that I've talked about is externalities, specifically negative externalities. One of the biggest areas where economics has not been able to really account for the negative externalities of our economic system is when it comes to the environment and when it comes to climate change. And this year, I, I am sad that this is so important that it won the Nobel Prize in economics, but also happy that it's getting attention. The economics Nobel Prize this year was split by William Nordhaus and Paul Romer. Now, Paul Romer looked at uh, calculating the impact of technological advancement economically, which is very interesting in and of itself. But what I want to focus in on today is the work of William Nordhaus. What he has done is to pioneer assessing the economic impact of climate change. And there are two sort of major problems right now with convincing governments and corporations and people to take climate change really seriously, not just I'm going to recycle and I'm going to get the Prius instead of the SUV. That's great. And it would be lovely if everybody did that. And I know Pat is doing all of those things. But if you truly understand the degree of the problem here, you see that there's a totally missing actual commitment from governments and corporations to solve the problem. Problem one is lack of a full assessment of what will the economic impact be of climate change, right? That lets people be in denial because we've not had good assessments of what are the total, what's the full scope of those negative externalities. It's easier for people to bury their head in the sand to look the other way and to say, well, it's going to be fixed. Problem two has been the assumption that even if we could figure out what we need to do to deal with climate change, that it's just going to be too expensive for governments, for companies. It's going to be too annoying to individuals, which is insane because if you think the solution is too expensive, you're admitting the problems really bad, right? Because if the solution were not expensive, it must be because the problem's not that bad. You're implicitly acknowledging the scope of the problem when you say it's just going to be too expensive. I don't want to set my heat to 55 in the middle of winter. I don't want to bike to work or whatever. So what Nordhaus did is he developed a system from the ground up. It's a model which lets economists analyze the costs of climate change. And those models now are the underpinning of a new United Nations report on the dangers of climate change, which, by the way, are sky high. One takeaway from Nordhaus's historic work is that governments charging people for polluting is a good idea. Nordhaus was an early adopter of carbon taxes. Now, it's not the solution, but it's something that in the short term can be done. The biggest takeaway of the work of William Nordhaus is that the market has failed. The market has failed. We hear from so-called climate skeptics and free marketers, marketeers, I don't know what the right term is, that the market's going to take care of climate change before it gets really bad. What we have in mind for really bad is probably out of a science fiction movie before it gets, quote, really bad. Naturally, incentives will surface in the market and corporations and private industry are going to fix the problem. The big conclusion from Nordhaus's work, which by now should be obvious to all of us, is the market has failed. The market has failed. Nordhaus says climate change is a result of the greatest market failure the world has seen. Just because Boston's not yet underwater, even if in 10 years we're able to build a system of dams to prevent Boston from going underwater, the market has already failed because it's getting worse and worse and worse. If the market was incentivized to solve this problem, we wouldn't be where we are now. Yeah, the neoclassical view on economics isn't holding up here. And I think that's why you'll have to see people on the right moving the goalposts. It's not any longer that the market will solve this problem. It's just that this problem doesn't exist, that climate change isn't happening and that certainly man isn't causing it. The explanations are becoming more and more unhinged from the skeptics because we're too far past now to go back. We have mounting expertise from economists that as a starting point, I mean, carbon taxes are just a must do. 
instead of subsidizing oil and other fossil fuels, we should be taxing the use of those fossil fossil fuels and then subsidizing the development of alternatives and the use of alternatives. But the problem is that the carbon taxes we would need to actually stop the advancement of this problem are ridiculously high. Like an IPCC estimate says we ultimately will need twenty seven thousand dollars per ton in carbon taxes. The Trump administration says that the total social cost is seven dollars per ton. Hmm. IPCC says we need to tax carbon at twenty seven K per ton. Trump says we really only have seven dollars worth of social costs per ton. So we know that in the end, carbon ta taxes aren't going to so solve this. We know that the market has already failed to solve it. We're going to need regulation, plain and simple. And the right says it's politicized. No, it's pointing out the reality of the situation. And the reality is that we're in huge trouble. And that's why it's depressing. But I'm glad to have the opportunity to tell you about the literally Nobel Prize winning work that is being done on this issue of climate change. I want to hear from you about this. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman and the show is on Twitter at David Pacman show. Quick break. We will be back after this. Today's program is sponsored in part by Blinkist dot com slash Pacman. If you've not already heard about Blinkist, it's amazing. It's an app for your phone, tablet or web browser. And what they do is they take nonfiction books, popular nonfiction, critically acclaimed nonfiction. They condense the book into a 15 minute audiobook. You get all the most important information and insights from each book, but you can soak up the entire essence of the book in one sitting. I've listened to a ton of books on Blinkist. One recent one is uh, Robert Reich's new book, The Common Good. Also Bunk by Kevin Young, useful in preparing me for the pseudoscience miniseries that we're producing. And if you are a David Pakman show viewer or listener, you can get a seven day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, use the link in the video description after the free trial. If you like it, you can get uh, the full access to thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. That's B L I N K I S T dot com forward slash P A K M A N. 